Well, happy day, Trinity Online and Trinity in person, because you're watching this too. It is so great to have each and every one of you join us today. My name is Scott. I'm one of the pastors here. On the other side of the camera is Noah, and we just love the fact that you've decided to join us in this season, and there's so much going on at Trinity. We always love to see you in person. Matter of fact, one of our elders was helping out at Trinity Women this week, and five ladies around her table had all joined us during COVID online and eventually found their way in person and plugged in. We always love when you plug in and connect and join us and experience what's going on here at Trinity and the fact that you join us from all over the world and right here in the Okanagan Valley. Uh, many of you have already come to say hello. Please keep doing that in the coming season. Today we have a powerful experience together. We're launching our brand new series called Known For. Uh, it's going to be great. Dave's here. we got a great worship set. So many things. Uh, I'm going to be back here on the back side of this. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into worship. together. If you're in the room, would you stand up as we have the opportunity to praise our God together? Let's dive in. Yeah, sir, so we get the chance to lift up a shout of praise to our God. Let's sing. I raise a hallelujah. And I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I'll raise a hallelujah Oh, heaven comes to fight for me Come on, I'm gonna sing And I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Oh, louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Cause death is defeated The King is alive yeah. Come on, let's race And I'll raise a hallelujah With everything inside of me Let's 
the Father. grateful for moments like these because when I hear other voices sing out truths about who you are, it centers me. God, when I'm reminded of what you've done and what you do, it puts things in perspective. And God, you know for each one of us what our week has looked like. You know the thoughts going through our minds. You know what we bring in. And yet in this space, God, you're present and you're faithful and you're good in the midst of all the things that might feel weighty, all the things that are significant. God, yesterday we had the opportunity to mark a national day of truth and reconciliation. God, we wanna be a community who remembers, a community who pursues peace, who learns what it looks like to come alongside and listen and honor and learn from our indigenous brothers and sisters. 
God, that as we follow Jesus, we would pursue truth and reconciliation. God, so many of us were also aware, whether through the headlines or through those that maybe we love who are close to the situation, the hurricanes that have been hitting the east coast of Canada and the U.S. God, the loss of life and the damage. And we just ask, Father, for your protection. God, we ask that you would comfort. God, we pray for those individuals and families and communities who face a long road of recovery ahead. And that's just one little corner of what's happening across our globe. And God, you know too that our own faith community right here at Trinity has been in the midst of its own perfect storm. And you are faithful and you are at work and you are on the move and Father, you are up to something good. And so we rest in that and we trust that. And God, we wanna find ourselves in a posture of humility. God, we wanna grow in how we love you and how we extravagantly love others. Would you help us do that today? And it is in the powerful, beautiful name of Jesus, we pray this, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for engaging in that time together. You can go ahead and have a seat now. One of the ways that we have the privilege of continuing in our worship is through our giving. And many of you do that regularly as an act of both obedience and faith. And there are many different ways that you can do that around here. Those are gonna come up on the side screens. And whether you give via text or you set up online giving or you bring a physical uh, envelope with cash or check to the church, you just need to know that when you give, that it makes such a significant impact in the life and the ministry of this church. And we're so, so grateful. Well, we have been gathering in this space in the gym and in higher grounds now for over a year, which is crazy to think about as our auditorium has been undergoing a very significant renovation due to flooding the summer before. And we've been keeping you updated and I am so excited to let you know that we are just five weeks away from moving into that new auditorium. Are you guys excited about that? That's so good. So mark your calendars on November 5, 6. That is our very first weekend in the new auditorium. But there is a lot that needs to happen for us collectively in order for us to get there. And so we're going to take just a couple of minutes to walk you through what that looks like uh, so that you know what's going on and how you can participate. So there's going to be a calendar that's going to pop up for us on these side screens in just a moment. And we're going to walk it through together. You can take a picture. It will also be available starting in just a few weekends here, October 20. Uh, we have the honor of hosting the Global Leadership Summit fantastic conference. Uh, there's still time to get tickets. Information is available for that. Trinity Family Experience. So if you've got little littles all the way up through middle and high school, this is going to be an amazing opportunity to connect as a family and with other families. Save the date. More information coming. So that in just a couple of weeks from that, at the end of October, October 2930, uh, you're going to see that it says Trinity Online Only. And here's why. All of our on-site experiences, weekend service experiences are going dark that weekend. And we're going to provide a really meaningful online experience because there is some really critical tech equipment in this space here in the gym that actually needs to move over and settle into its new home in the new auditorium. Uh, but it is not quite as simple as just carrying that over into the courtyard and plugging it in. And so uh, by doing an online experience the weekend of October 29 and 30, uh, that gives our staff and volunteer teams time to make that shift as well as still provide a meaningful opportunity for all of us at home. It would be an opportunity to maybe host a brunch with your community group or your volunteer team, or maybe invite some neighbors over for church. But if you're like, Sarah, I can't stay away from church completely that weekend, you don't have to, just not for a weekend service. Because you will see, of course, on that Saturday morning, we have team day, clean day. And it is just what it sounds like. We are going to spend the morning cleaning and organizing and getting our entire campus ready for the following weekend as we prepare to welcome so many people. We're just anticipating uh, as we continue to grow that there are going to be lots of new faces. And so mark that on your calendars. Come serve as a family or as a community group, uh, it's going to be a great morning together. 
And then on Friday, November 4th, we're going to host a prayer summit and auditorium dedication. It's going to be our very first opportunity to do a large gathering in that space together. Uh, Of course, we have been praying through and dedicating that space to the Lord throughout this process, but that's going to be a really significant, powerful evening where we get to do that together through worship and prayer. So you don't want to miss that. And then you'll note there is no service happening that Friday Uh, Sorry, that Saturday, November 5th, because we are going to gather our entire faith community for one big service together in that new space on Sunday, November 6th for a renewed heart, renewed home, move in celebration. Who is excited about that? So good. That is a long time coming and we are so excited and prayerfully anticipating what God has in store um, for that weekend, but even between now and then, we believe God has such good things in store for this faith community. Now, speaking about the future of this faith community, today, following this service, we're hosting a town hall meeting right here in the gym. And the elder board has a significant update about the senior pastor search process. Uh, If you get the newsletter, you've probably already seen that update. Uh, So would encourage you, it is open to anybody, whether you are a member or this is your very first weekend at Trinity. But the elder board will give an update and then there'll be an opportunity for some questions and discussion. And this is such an important conversation for our church right now and for its future. For those of you with kids, here's how it's going to work. We do have a separate kids experience happening during the town hall, but here's how that's going to play out. You're going to, right after service, head over, pick up your children. We're going to need two or three minutes to quickly reset those spaces, and then just because of our safety and security protocols, you're going to check your kids into that separate kids experience for the town hall. If you've got toddlers and preschool, they're in the blue room of the preschool hallway, and if you've got grade schoolers and kindergarten to grade five, they're going to be upstairs in the harvest room. So you'll pick them up, give us two minutes, check them back in, and head right back here to the gym for this important conversation. Well, in just a minute, we're going to receive an update that we get to watch from the deacons. I'm so thankful for our deacons, and part of the leadership that they give to our church is in around the area of membership. Uh, at our last membership meeting, we had 40 brand new members, which was incredible. And so right now, we get to hear an update from our deacons. Check this out. Hi, my name is Sandy, and I'm one of the deacons here at Trinity. If you're like me, you are excited about so many good things that are happening right now at Trinity Church. As you know, so much has happened over the past few years, both in our world and in our church. A global pandemic, a senior pastor transition, a major building project, and yet we have continued to see a growing momentum here at Trinity despite these changes. We are thrilled about where God is leading us and what he is doing through us as a church family. Recently, we launched a Renewed Heart, Renewed Home campaign to support our auditorium renovation. But as we get closer to that move-in date, we have been feeling that this Renewed Heart and Renewed Home is much more than just a building renovation and more about the renovation that God is doing in our church family. That is why we, as a deacon committee, are urging you to join us in a membership affirmation process that gives all existing Trinity members an opportunity to revisit the pledge you signed. Whether you've been a member for decades or you just joined in the past year, we're requiring all members to participate. For the next four weeks, our deacons will have affirmation tables in the refinery foyer and in higher grounds with a membership affirmation form. You can also sign our digital version of the form by going to the membership page on the website. We would ask that you turn in all signed forms by November 1st so we can celebrate and commission our full family of members on that first weekend in November. If you are not yet a member, you can join in. Fill out the new member form on our website and plan on coming out to the next membership class being held in October. Together, let's make this a year to celebrate our renewed commitment to what God is doing in us and through us. I love what our deacons are doing right now and so thankful for them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they give spiritual oversight to our community and in conjunction with our board. They're doing such a great job these days. And uh, we couldn't be more excited about the process of, of reaffirming our commitment to what God has called us to do, each one of us in this community of faith. 
Well, uh, today uh, we are starting a new series called Known For. Now, we've also come out of this last summer of a long extended series on Ephesians chapter 4 where we were called to be a united people. And Scott wrapped that whole series up last week and he did a masterful job. And so if you did not see last week, you need to go back and watch last weekend's service because it was so, so powerful. And if you're watching Trinity Online right now and you did not watch last week, stop this right now, stop watching, I'm, I'm serious, and go back and watch last week because you're gonna learn way more from Scott than you ever will from me. So, and Scott, I heard Scott laughing right over there. So, uh, hey, so uh, today we begin a new series called Known For, and it's kind of an extension of where we've been with United because if we're a united people following after Jesus, then we should be known for some things. The way we walk, the way we talk, the actions that we live out, well, we should be known for that. In fact, businesses do this really, really well. Businesses that are singular focused, they, they have a personality about that company. And, and all you need to do is see their logo and you know exactly what they're known for. Let's t- check this out and see if it's true. So what is this known for? Yep, the most expensive coffee on the planet, that's right. Uh, What's the next one? What is this known for? Shoes, yeah. Michael Jordan actually made this really popular. Don't be creasing my J's for all you next geners. Uh, And then uh, what's this one? That's right, motorcycles. Speaking of motorcycles, renewed heart, renewed home, ride for renewal. That happened two weeks ago. We had 19 motorcyclists do a big loop, and they raised almost $40,000 for renewed heart, renewed home, right? Yeah. 19 guys on motorcycles for six hours. We only got lost once. So uh, not bad, not bad. Uh, what's this next one known for? Greasy cheeseburgers. Greasy cheeseburgers. That's right. Burgers or obesity, you choose. Uh, and then the final one, what is this known for? Trinity, Trinity Church. Yeah, if you're new around here, this is our logo. And, and it was designed off of a fourth century ancient icon for the Trinity. It's three intersecting loops that represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And together it creates the personality of God. It also reminds us of our mission statement to love God, love others, and change the world through Christ. And in the center, it's us, it's Trinity. So if somebody were to see this logo, or, or you bump into somebody on the street, and they hear the words Trinity Church. What are we known for? A team day a couple of weeks ago, Scott was introduced to a couple for the very first time, and they had just moved to the area a couple of months earlier. And as they moved in, they met their neighbor, and they had a conversation. They said, we're looking for a church. Could you recommend one? And she's like, I would never darken the door of a church. But if I would... This last year, I spent some time working for IH at the immunization clinic at Trinity. It's like, I would never be caught at a church, but if I ever would someday go, I'd go to that church because they really care for people. I don't know about you, but when a professing atheist becomes a witness to others about what God is doing, isn't that something that we want to be known for? Right? So today we're going to take this first challenge and we want to talk about what it would be look like if we're known for listening and following. What does it look like to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit? And not just hear it, not, not just hear it, hey God, I think you're saying something to me, but actually walk in it. There's this great story in the book of Isaiah chapter 30, and it's a story that has a kind of a hard beginning but a beautiful ending, and, and it's all about listening and following. Here, here's the backstory. King Hezekiah was a good king. He was king over the southern tribe of Judah, and, and so uh, even good kings sometimes make some really bad choices, and King Hezekiah made a really bad choice. See, he was watching an opposing people called the Assyrians with a massive army come through and decimate nation after nation after nation, and they were next. And so Hezekiah was 
fearful. And instead of looking to the past to see the God who has only ever been faithful, the God who has showed up when all circumstances seemed like they were against them and delivered them, instead of relying on that God, King Hezekiah went to Egypt and had a conversation with Pharaoh and tried to get their army to support them. Now, for those of you that knew, know a little bit about Old Testament history, that should ring some alarm bells, right? Because a couple of centuries earlier, there was a massive exodus that Moses led to get the Israelites out of Egypt and out of slavery. And here we are a couple of hundred years later, and the king wants to go back. So a prophet named Isaiah comes to King Hezekiah and is speaking on behalf of God with some very interesting words. Here, let's pick it up at the beginning on verse 1 in chapter 30. Woe to the obstinate children, declares the Lord, those who carry out plans that are not mine, forming an alliance, but not by my spirit, heaping sin upon sin, who go down to Egypt without consulting me, who look for help to Pharaoh's protection, to Egypt's shade for refuge. But Pharaoh's protection will be your shame. Egypt's shade will bring you disgrace. That's a really nice, hi, how you doing this morning from the father, huh? That's a really harsh rebuke. But God is gracious and compassionate and does not stay angry. And he ends up at verse 19 saying these words. O oh, people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry out for help. Let me read that again. How gracious he will be when you cry out for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I pride myself of being a really good driver. Uh, grew up in Calgary, went to college in Edmonton, and in that meantime, my parents moved here to the Okanagan. And so I did the drive from Edmonton to here in Kelowna a lot through the Rogers Pass. My first car was a 1981 Volkswagen Rabbit. Any other Volkswagen fans out there today? Ha, 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 ha. Yep, my daughter in the front row right there. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and I, I prided myself, I did that in the summer, in the winter, did that road a lot. I prided myself of being a good driver. And then a few years back, they put those rumble strips in the road, you know what I'm talking about? And I learned something. I wander, like I use a lot of the road. And then I got a car a couple of years ago where if you unintentionally swerve into the lane, your steering wheel does a little shimmy shimmy. And I recognized again that I just naturally use way too much of the road than I should. I wander. But it's not just my driving. I wander in my spiritual life as well. And I need cor constant course correction to get me back on track. King Hezekiah wandered from what God wanted for them. He wandered and stopped hearing the voice of the father whisper in his ear, saying, remember me from the past? I'm going to be faithful in the present. But he let fear grip him, and it created a chasm in that conversation with God. I had a similar thing happen in my life years ago, uh, and, and I created a chasm in my life in listening to the promptings of the spirit. But for me, it wasn't fear. For me, it was pride. And I'd like to tell you that story. In fact, it's my most embarrassing ministry moment. And there has been a lot. But this is definitely up there. Three years ago, uh, I was uh, the program director at Green Bay Bible Camp on the, on the west side. And in the springtime, I would do camp promotions around in the area. I would go to summer, uh, come to churches and uh, talk about uh, coming to summer camp, recruit campers, recruit summer staff. And, uh, and we did lots of fun stuff because 
Camp is supposed to be fun. So we, we gave away candy. We did t-shirt cannons. We did impromptu dance parties. Never in a Baptist church. Never did the impromptu Baptist, the dance parties in Baptist church. Uh, but there was a local church that we had a great relationship with. And uh, I had a, a friendship with the children's pastor. His name was Richard. And Richard always pushed me to do some really creative kind of off the wall kind of ideas. And so one day, one year, we had this summer theme called Live the Adventure, and it was all based off of the Indiana Jones movies. Remember those? And so uh, we created this scenario, and it was pretty fun. So the, the auditorium in this space was kind of a square room like this, and the stage, it kind of exactly like it is right here, but a super high ceiling with beams. But back here on the second floor was kind of a railing and a hallway with classrooms behind it. And that hallway stretched the entire length of the room. And so what we did is, is we put some drapes on this side of the room and behind those drapes we inflated a giant earth ball that represented the big boulder that was about to crush Indiana Jones. And so we put that back there and I got my costume, my hat, my whip, rugged good looks of Harrison Ford, natural. Uh, and so I was waiting up there. My friend Richard is down on stage. It's Camp Sunday. He gets in the middle of the service. Families, kids in the audience. He's like, hey, it's Camp Sunday. We got Green Bay Dave here with us. And, but I haven't seen him. Uh, has anyone seen Green Bay Dave? On the count of three, let's say, come on out, Green Bay Dave. One, two, three, come on out, Green Bay Dave. And when that happened, the theme song from Indiana Jones started to pump through the system loud. Dun, 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 dun. I pop out like a Disney character in costume, and I come over right above the stage. I jump up on the balcony, hanging onto a beam, and then they release the boulder, and it now comes down that little ramp and is now exposed to everybody. Oh, no, what's going to happen? And so the boulder is about to crush me, and just as it, before it does... I grab a rope that's hidden behind the beam that's attached to the middle of the room. I clip it into a carabiner that's hidden by my costume in a harness, and I jump off of the balcony. I swing around the entire audience back to center stage and rappel down right next to Richard. It was amazing. Everyone was like, ah, we love, geez, I mean, summer camp, right? It was a great, fun experience. Richard comes to me the next year and says, Dave, we got to up our game. We got to do something bigger. I'm like, oh, okay. Now, it was at this moment, and this has all been set up. It is at this moment that I start to hear a voice. And that voice says, you don't need to do that. You just need to tell stories about how good I have been at camp and just invite people into the experience. And I'm like, yeah, but we could do something really fun. Like, and so I started to ignore or push that voice away. And so we came up with a very creative plan. We were going to bring the blob inside. So I'm not sure how many of you know what the blob is, but the blob is, here's a picture. It's a giant inflatable pillow that sits on the water. And uh, there's a tower on one side, you jump onto it, you scooch you over, and then another person jumps onto it, launches you in the air. So the idea was, we were going to set the blob up on the floor of the auditorium, we were going to put camp brochures on one side, I was going to jump off the balcony, or the, the railing, land on the blob, release the brochures into the air. Fun, right? And so we thought, this is really great. We should try it out before we actually do this. So on Saturday, we came in, we cleared a path for the chairs, we set up the blob, put the brochures on one side, I jump off, it launches the brochures, perfect, it was great. Until, the blob was designed to work on water, not on concrete. It's designed to displace. What happened was the air shot to one side of the blob. It swallowed me up like a Venus flytrap. The air came back. It spit me back out. I did a full somersault in the air, landed on my feet right next to the blob. Richard comes running over and says, are you okay? I'm like, I think so. And he says, we're not going to do that. That was really awful. And so again, I hear this prompting. Hey, genius. That's God's nickname for me. <laughs> he uses it a lot. He says, genius, what are you doing? 
This isn't about you. It's about me. Tell stories. Tell about how good I am. Invite people into the experience. And I'm like, yeah, but we can do something really fun. So Richard and I began to brainstorm again. We packed up the blob. And we ran out of time. We didn't have anything really great, but we did come up with a scenario. And so Camp Sunday comes. There's about 1,000 people in the room, families, kids. And then there were other camps in the room, too. It just was in Green Bay. I was representing all the local camps in the area. And so it got to that moment in the service. Richard is on stage. Hey, it's Camp Sunday. We got Green Bay Dave here from Green Bay. And uh, has anyone seen Green Bay Dave? On the count of three, come on out, Green Bay Dave. And at that moment, the sound system started to blare Wipeout by Jan and Dean. Which will become very apparent in a moment. <laughs> and I am wearing a wetsuit. I've got a slalom ski over my shoulder, and I'm in the back of the room, and I'm like, Wahoo! Come to summer camp! And I start running down the center aisle of the auditorium, and I get right in the middle of the room, and I stop, and I'm like, I'm gonna spin around and do a dance of joy. So I spin around in a 360, and I hit a 71-year-old lady in the back of the head. That water ski knocked her out. And the entire room did exactly what you're doing right now. You thought that was a surprise? She did too. Dr. Brinkerhoff was the attending. And he came on scene and she was fine, but that was a slow walk to the stage. Back to our verse. Uh, let's go back to the verse. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, I was in adversity and I was afflicted. But my teacher was hidden from me no more because I saw I had made it about me. I had made it about me. And now I have a choice turn to the right or the left and listen to the promptings of the Father. Ezekiel had a choice, and he ignored it. I had a choice, and I ignored it. We need to learn how to listen, not just listen and hear, but listen and follow. There's this great illustration that Stephen Furtick uh, did a ways back about his kid growing up. I loved it for a long time, and then this last week, we were going through some family footage and I came across one and it reminded me of that illustration and I thought it was so perfect for our talk today. And so this is uh, my daughter, Skylar, our daughter, Skylar, uh, when she's just about a year Skylar. old. Skylar, Skylar, come here. Baby girl, come. Come walk this way. Hey, Skylar. Baby girl, come here. Yeah, hi, come on. Good girl. Yay. Whoa. Okay, can't, Scott, come on up here. Come on up. Okay, uh, look, look at all she did, and mom didn't even clap. <laughs> she walked all the way up here. Did you see that walk? She, she walked all the way up here on her own. There were even stairs. And we didn't even need to prompt you. And you guys weren't all that much better. You were good. Yeah. You, in the front, you, you were encouraging. <laughs> But here's the thing, you were just over a year old back then, and you still had that drunk baby walk, it was beautiful, and your cheeks, those were glorious. You get those from me. <laughs> but here's the thing, you, now you just walked up, you just did it. You just walked on stage all by yourself. It just asked you, you just came right up. It was beautiful, it was eloquent. It was here's the thing. When you begin to be prompted by the Spirit into a spiritual journey that you release your own control and say, I make Jesus the Lord of my life. God, the Holy Spirit, is like, come on, come on, come to me, come to me, take a step. Yeah, you can do it. Come on, walk this way, walk this way. It's great. And it is this drawing in to a new way of life. 
and it's beautiful, and it's new, and it's, it's something to be celebrated for sure. Angels will rejoice when you make that decision. And then, and then some of you, a lot of you probably here today were prompted by the Spirit again and said, come on, come on, I want you to be baptized. I want you to make your, your faith public. Come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. That's right. And when that happens, when you become baptized here at Trinity Church, we throw a party. We, we sing, we shout, we scream from the rooftop because we know the, what it means to, to be transformed by the Spirit because we know the journey. We've all got junk. We've all got stories. And when you get into that water, there is this recognition of repentance that just is so beautiful. And we celebrate that. Yay, you are so good. Come walk this way. But here's the revelation. There is a point where God moves from this position to this position and says, now, whether you turn to the right or the left, listen for my voice. Walk this way. Walk. Walk. That's right. This is the way. Walk in it. This is the way. When you get to the next day, I'll give you another direction. This is the day. Turn left. This is the day. Walk in it. Turn left. This is the way. Walk in it. This is, she could have walked right off that stage and it wouldn't have been my fault. (laughs) But she listened to the voice of her father. She listened when, when her father said, turn. She turned. Not like Hezekiah, not like me. She listened to the promptings of the father. And the, the father says, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. Every day I will stick close to you. This is my promise. I will never leave you, but stay close to my voice so you can hear my whispers. Turn left, this is the way, walk in it. Turn left, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. Now, some of you, are here and it's beautiful that you are here on a Sunday and you are worshiping, you are praying and you are learning from scriptural truth. And that is awesome. But if the next time you are in church is next Sunday, that is too far. We sing three songs here on a weekend and we get all filled up and we hit Wednesday and we think, man, I am so defeated. What have you been doing in the meantime? Right? You want worship as your warfare, but you're not going to use it as a weapon? Come on. This is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. When you're at a date and God says, no, you need to leave, this is the way, walk in it. I wasn't talking to you, I was talking about other people out there. (laughs) This is the way, walk in it. This is, turn left, this is the way, walk in it. Turn left, this is the way, walk in it. When you need to be generous with the things that I've been given to you, I want you to be so generous. I want you to give $50 to Renewed Heart, Renewed Home. I want you to give $500,000 to Renewed Heart, Renewed Home. This is the way, walk in it. Turn left, this is the way, walk in it. Turn left, this is the way, walk in it. I want you to be so repentant when it's your fault. I want you to be so forgiving when it's others. This is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. And now follow the voice of your father and walk down those stairs and go join your mom. Church, let's be a community that's known for listening to the Father's voice and not just listening, but walking in it. Let's walk in obedience. And I love what Jay said. Jay was at our Friday morning prayer thing a couple of weeks ago. Well, he's there every week. But a couple of weeks ago, he said, uh, when we're sharing on the backside in those moments, he said, if you're not sure if the Holy Spirit has been talking to you, if you are 51% confident, then share something, right? I'm like, We're never going to be 100% confident. We're not. But as long as we're a little bit confident along the way, walk in it. Be obedient. And if it's the wrong choice, you're going to learn from it. This is the way. And we're going to talk about that more in the podcast this week between me and Josh. How do you discern the promptings of of the Spirit? Others, Scripture, there's a list that just helps you walk that talk. Walk that word out in your life. 
But we need to be obedient people. This is why we're in the refinery for this season. God has called us to be a people. He's gathered us together. He says, I want to teach you something so that you can be a light in this community and go out and live it. You need to live it. Not just listen to it. I need you to live it. There's a song that has been wrecking my heart uh, ever since I heard it about a year ago called Same God. And this song walks through uh, different chapters of scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, and it tells the story of God's faithfulness when people stepped up in obedience. So that's my prayer for us as a community. Today, would you leave today? Would you have a conversation with somebody else and say, how do you live out the whispers of God in your life? What does it look like for you? What does it sound like to you? We gotta learn from each other. We gotta figure this out because God's called us to so much people as a community. He's called you to so much. He's called us to listen and to walk. And this song, this song just makes my heart beat fast because it's all about God's faithfulness. And he's been a God that's been faithful in biblical history. And he's been a God that's been faithful in our church history. And I believe that he will be again today. So let's stand and let's sing these words together.
back of the head. Uh, her name was Ruth. And Ruth and I became well acquainted after that. In fact, every time I visited the church after that, they gave her a helmet. <laughs> Ruth 
was a visitor that Sunday. She had only been there a few weeks. And because the church was kind of on a younger demographic, she really didn't feel like she fit in. And so she prayed and said, God, I I love this church. I'm going to be a part of it. And God said, give me one more week. And on the way in that day, she prayed, God, would something happen today that I would be able to meet others? God didn't need me to hit Ruth over the head. He could have worked his way in a very different way, a very uh, less painful way. But God needed to hit me over the head. And he allowed both of our stories to intersect in a beautiful way that proved his sovereignty, that God loves to take the beautiful, the broken things of our life and turn them into something beautiful. And I believe he wants to take the broken things of your life and turn them into something beautiful. And I believe that he's doing a work of taking the broken things of our church and transforming them into something beautiful. I'm so excited for our future. Let's do this walk together. Let's listen to the promptings of the Spirit walk in it. It is good to be together today. Um, If you've got kids, if you've got littles, make sure that you're going to check those out and then check them back in to be back here for the town hall. Um, We're going to have a 15-minute break. Uh, The timer's going to go up on the side screens, so when we hit zero, we're going to begin the town hall. But go uh, meet some people, go out, grab a a breath of fresh air, come back in, and uh, we'll start May the favor of the Father be on you today. Blessings. Amen. Thanks for being here today, Trinity Online and Trinity in person. We're always so grateful. And what a powerful weekend together. Uh, This is my voice. Walk in it. I hope that is your prayer this week. And we're believing that God's going to lead you in a powerful way, whether it's your neighbors or your coworkers, or maybe it's in your own family. And we're going to believe. Uh, that God's going to meet you in a very powerful way. As always, uh, look for an opportunity to get plugged in. You can reach out to us. You can DM us. Thanks for being here. We love you, and we'll see you next week.